This is a super cool little book that I've had for a very, very long time. And it's one of my favorite books in my math book collection. And I think it's because one, it actually has full solutions to every single exercise. Two, it took me a lot of work to find this. It's pretty rare and I wouldn't say it's expensive, but like it's more than five or $10. It's out of print and it makes it pretty limited. I'll try to leave a link in the description if I can find any copies. Now this one, this copy is special. I feel like um, it was bound for the library perhaps because it's a hardcover. Um, I have versions of this book that are soft covers too. Other, other versions, by other versions I mean other books. This is part of a series. This is book one. I don't own the whole series, but I have some of the other ones as well. So it's called Algebra Through Practice, a collection of problems in algebra with solutions. And this one is on sets, relations, and mapping. So this is not like, you know, algebra one from high school or college algebra from college. No, no. Um, it's a little bit different. It's written by Blith and Robertson, and there's um, some numbers there. And then you hear, you see the title. And let's open it up. I love that this version is a hardcover. Elon College Library, Elon, North Carolina. It's named after uh, Elon Musk. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Def definitely not. Uh, no longer the property of Elon University uh, Library. Oh, what's it? There's a stamp. July 10th, 1986. Cool. Algebra through practice. Book one, sets, relations, and mappings. A collection of problems in algebra with solutions. And these people are from the University of St. Andrews. The right of the University of Cambridge to print and sell all manner of books was granted by Henry VIII in 1534. The university has printed and published continuously since 1584. Wow, Cambridge University Press. And then here is the copyright, 84. Printed in Great Britain at the University Press, Cambridge. That'd be a really cool place to to visit just to see, you know, do they still make books there? You know, what's it like? Uh, you know, I just, for some reason, I picture this historic building where they're making books, uh, but that's probably not, not the case. So here is the contents, sets, relations, and mappings, and then you have solutions, and then you have test papers. Let's look at the test papers at the back and just jump to the test papers because I wanna see something. I know we're starting backwards. So here's the test papers. Here's test paper four. And then you have, you don't have uh, solutions to the test papers. That's what I wanted to check because I'm pretty sure you didn't. But you have solutions to the exercises. So it's kind of interesting. So you don't get answers to the test papers, but you still get answers to all the problems. So let me just show you how it works. Here's the background reference material. It says courses on abstract algebra can be very different in style and content. Likewise, textbooks recommended for those courses vary enormously, not only in notation and exposition, but also in their level of sophistication. It's very, very true. Here's a list of some major texts that are widely used and to which the reader may refer for background material. The subject matter of these texts covers all six books in the Algebra Through Practice series, and in some cases, a great deal more. For the convenience of the reader, there is given below an indication of which parts of which of these texts is most relevant to the appropriate chapters of this book. And of course, all the books are prior to 1984. Oh wow, J.J. Rotman, The Theory of Groups, an introduction. I believe he passed away uh, several years ago. He was an algebraist. And I just mentioned him because um, I emailed him once because I found a typo in one of his books uh, back in the early 2000s. And he replied to my email and I thought that was really cool. Yeah, Lang. I have that book. I also have the Hurstein book. Cool, I have a lot of these books. All right, let's keep going. And then, so it starts with sets. And then you can see it just basically gives you an overview of sets. Like it does it really quickly, right? It's like a super, super quick condensed look and that's it, <laughs> right, you're done. Then you start doing exercises, one. So you have A and then which of the following are true? List the elements of the power set of the power set of the empty set and of the power set of the power set of the power set of the empty set. That's number two. Wow. 
So just little problems that you can do for practice. And the really cool thing is you have answers to all of them. So you can actually do these problems and then you can go to the back of the book here and check your work. And this is something that obviously a lot of math books are missing. Most modern books that are used in colleges and universities in the US today have answers to the odd numbered problems or less. They don't typically have answers to all of the problems. Whereas this is a problem book. I also like this series in this particular book also because the problems vary in difficulty. Like they start off pretty easy and, and they do get harder. So like I feel like you have a fighting chance. I have a problem book uh, on linear algebra that is just, I just feel it's a bit much. Like there's no easy problems. Uh, it's not really the best problem book. Whereas I think that these people, Blith and Robertson did a great job on all of their books. Uh, very, very good compared to other problem books I have. I think this series is quite superior and it's a shame that uh, it's out of print. Uh, again, I'll look and I'll try to leave a link in the description. I don't know um, if it's in print and I don't think it is. I'm pretty sure it's out of print. Here's a cool problem. The functions f and g from r to r are defined by, oh cool, show that the composition g o f is a bijection and give a formula for the inverse. Show also that f o g is neither injective nor surjective. Wow, so that's something you gotta sit down and work out. Here's another one here. It's pretty cool, right? Cool little problems that um, you wouldn't expect to see uh, in other books. A lot of other books don't have problems like this. So it's, it's a nice source of exercises if you're looking for such a source. Yeah, I gotta give it a whiff here. It's just, it's drawing me. Ah, oh, smells so good, so good. I remember spending um, hours on the internet searching for these books, um, for the other books in the series, uh, but they're, they're hard to find. Again, I'll, I'll try to see what I can do. So who can read this? Well, I think the prereq for this would be uh, just some basic uh, proof writing skills or just some basic knowledge of sets. I mean, there's no proofs yet here. Well, there is a show here, uh, but you know, there are proofs in here, but you could, you could probably jump into it without proofs and, and struggle. And knowing how to write proofs is gonna make uh, reading a book like this uh, so much easier, so much easier. Biggest con to this book is that it doesn't have answers to the test papers, but then again, it doesn't even need to have test papers, right? You, you could take the test papers out, then, then it's not a con, because I can't say it doesn't have answers. So I don't like to you know, talk bad about the book for what it doesn't have. It does a great job on what it does have. And yeah, I only wish it had more. Um, yeah, it's a great series. They did a great job, Blip and Robertson. Uh, timeless classic, in my opinion. Uh, very out of print, very hard to find. I recommend it. If you want to learn math, uh, I do have courses. Uh, feel free to check them out. They're on my website, freemathvids.com or mathsorcerer.com. I'll also leave a link in the description. The courses are actually on the Udemy website. But if you decided to check out any of my courses, please, please use my links as it helps me greatly. Otherwise, Udemy takes pretty much a big chunk of it. And I have courses on calculus and algebra. I have a course on set theory proofs. It's just like proofs in set theory. Uh, I have an advanced calculus course, an abstract algebra course, and some other things as well. And if you're not a subscriber and you feel like uh, you found any value in this content, subscribe if you want to. If not, that's okay too. And if you take away anything from this video, I would say that this book is really cool. <laughs> so I really like this book. It's one of my favorite books. Uh, I just got to smell it again. And I love how this one's a hard cover. So I'm guessing, I'm guessing that it was, ah, oh, smells good. I'm guessing that the library or someone bound it because normally it's a soft cover. So if you know about that stuff and, and why it looks like this, uh, leave a comment. I'm curious. Maybe other people are curious as well. So yeah, really great book. I hope it's been helpful. Good luck.